videos we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. In 2022, actor Matt Damon splurged on an $8.5 million mansion set on 13.5 sprawling acres in Bedford, New York, which is perfect for the family considering he and his wife Luciana Barroso share four children. The grounds offer plenty of amenities like an antique barn, stream, pond, and much more. Well, the stone and clapboard home was built in 2004 and renovated in 2021. A couple of years back, Matt also sold his Pacific Palisades mansion over in LA for $18 million, which was a unique blend of craftsman and Southeast Asian design. While well, he also reportedly owns a luxury Brooklyn townhouse, which he bought in 2018 for a record-breaking price. Around mid-2022, Matt Damon snagged a stunning $8.5 million property in the heart of Bedford, New York for he and his family. Matt and his wife, Luciana Barroso, bought it through an LLC that shares a Santa Monica, California address with Damon and his best bud, Ben Affleck's Pearl Street Film Studio. The mansion boasts a traditional and timeless stone and clapboard colonial style on the exterior, as well as 13.5 acres of land surrounding it, where you'll find everything from a spring-fed pond to hiking trails, rope bridges, and much more. The 7,190 square foot home features an elegant interior. And while it was constructed in 2004, it was thoroughly renovated in 2021, adding modern upgrades in the process. Inside, you'll see the place was made with only the best craftsmanship and fine attention to detail. The layout offers four beds and 5.5 baths. While walking in, you're instantly greeted with an open air front foyer that gives a glimpse of what's to come. Aside from the grand staircase and double height ceilings here, there's a lobby-like sitting area and just past that, the formal living room with fireplace and French doors that spill out onto a terrace. In fact, on the main floor, all of the rooms open up to covered stone terraces and have plenty of natural sunlight, including the airy chef's kitchen designed by Christopher Peacock. The custom kitchen centers in on a large island with bar-style seats, while there are also stainless steel appliances and the room attaches directly to a casual family room. Nearby spaces include a large dining room with built-in bookshelves, a couple of sunned rooms, and a cozy study or office room. The family and guest bedroom are all spacious and most come with an ensuite bath while the master retreat is indulgent and comfortable as they come. This space has its own brand new spa-like bathroom, a gym, and a coffee bar. While the private porch and balcony attached to the master suite overlook the sparkling stream and ponds. Moving outside, the Damon family will have more than enough grounds to explore as aside from the pond and stream, the property comes with its own network of woodland trails, boardwalks, and even rope bridges. Bonuses include a massive saltwater pool, a greenhouse, an antique barn, a tree house, and an all-weather tennis courts. Matt also made local headlines here in July 2021 before snagging this property when he endorsed his former college roommate Carl Petschek as the Republican candidate for Bedford Town Justice in a video on social media. Despite the A-list endorsement, Petschek lost his Democratic opponent, Jody Kimmel. In 2018, reports claimed that Matt Damon had purchased his other residence in Brooklyn, New York. However, it said he didn't fully move in here until 2020. His purchase of the this penthouse broke records in the Brooklyn area, spending $16.7 million on a luxury multi-floor unit at the top of the Standish building. While details and images of Matt's mansion in the sky are scarce, what we do know is that it boasts 6,218 square feet of space on the 11th and 12th floors plus a roof. Located in the newly refurbished and ultra-exclusive apartment building, Matt's home is in New York City's historic Brooklyn Heights neighborhood. In 2020, outlets reported the entire block was shut down for a huge crane and many spotted furniture being lifted up into this penthouse unit. The major hall reportedly included several trees to landscape his terrace. And no doubt, this was all for Matt's family home. Well, apparently it took an entire year for the actor to close on the home, and when he finally did it, it made for the highest price paid for residential real estate in Brooklyn to date. The renovation 
renovated former hotel, the Standish, which is Matt's current building, was designed by Frank S. Lowe and built in 1903. But back then, it served as an apartment hotel. It's one of the tallest buildings in the immediate area, offering residents on the upper levels wide open views across the East River to the Brooklyn Bridge and even the Manhattan skyline. Exteriors both symmetrical brick, terracotta, and limestone, and it's a 12-story building offering 31 residences and a handful of amenities. It's also right on the Brooklyn Heights promenade. Acquired by the Jehovah Witnesses in the early 1980s, the Standish was sold in 2007 to a developer who then turned the building into rentals before it was reimagined into a luxury condominium development. The first units came up for sale back in 2016. Residents, Matt Damon included, pay pricey monthly charges to live at the building, and interiors offer a redesigned lobby with porcelain and marble finishes that just look fancy. They also get access to all of the upscale amenities at the Sandish, which include a 24-hour doorman and concierge services, a full fitness center, a children's playroom, and a shared rooftop terrace with panoramic water and city views. Living here, Matt also has some celebrity neighbors too. Star couple Emily Blunt and John Krasinski have a unit at the Standish. At the end of 2021, Matt finally sold his former home, his Pacific Palisades area mansion. Considering he switched his main home to New York, he didn't need his crib on the West Coast any longer, having been trying to offload it since the early months of 2021. In the end, the actor collected $18 million for it in an off-market deal. Meanwhile, he'd originally bought the home with his wife about a decade ago for $15 million. The home Matt lived at with his family for a handful of years sits in the much coveted Riviera pockets of the Pacific Palisades, located on the seaside in Los Angeles. The estate was zen and modern, made up of a creation of wood, stone, and stucco pavilions, blending craftsmen and Southeast Asian design, classic California contemporary. If it sounds unique, that's because it was. Matt's home sat on a corner lot spanning over half an acre, hidden from the street behind trees and gates. And the Hawaiian-looking mansion is tall, as well as massive, offering over 13,500 square feet of space throughout. Not to mention, there are seven beds and 10 baths inside, so plenty of accommodation. Built in 2004, created by KAA Design, Matt's former home incorporated organic materials and only the best craftsmanship throughout. The interior the interior of this massive home is arranged around an atrium with 35 foot high ceilings topped by a mahogany ceiling. The common and private rooms surround the central atrium and include an impressive combination living dining room with garden views as well as a large stone fireplace. Just a step down from here is the billiards lounge with wet bar and nearby there's a separate media lounge opening to the outdoors. The kitchen was simply fit for a celeb, decked out in marble and mahogany with white marble countertops and wooden cabinets, as well as top-notch appliances. There's further a casual dining space and family room attached, which boasts floor-to-ceiling walls of glass that open to give the space an easy indoor-outdoor flow. The mansion also boasts a full basement level stacked with amenities, as you might expect. These include a children's playroom den, a climate-controlled wine cellar with taste room and a full home gym. Upstairs, on the other hand, contains the luxury master suite which Matt and his wife no doubt enjoyed during their years living here. The primary bedroom includes a private terrace, indulgent massage room, stone covered and spacious ensuite bath, and more. There are also two sprawling walk-in closets, one with a raised mahogany ceiling and the other with a long skylight, both with wall-to-wall -wall carpeting for a cozy Feel. The rest of the bedrooms all have en suites, and two of the sleeping quarters are specifically said to be for live in staff. Moving to the grounds of this impressive mega home, it's about as close to a Hawaiian paradise in LA as you're going to get, with its many tropical plants and massive trees creating an oasis. 
In addition to the entry courtyard with terrace, there's a large lawn with playgrounds for the kids and an open air pavilion with plenty of space for outdoor dining and entertaining. Next to this breezy pavilion, you'll find the Bali style swimming pool to round out the stunning backyard. After looking at Matt Damon's multitude of properties, including his newest acquisition in Bedford, New York, where it's assumed he's living, that's gonna conclude today's house tour. But before we leave, answer me this. Would you move further away from the city in order to get a ton of land full of your own gardens and even hiking trails as well as privacy? Well, let me know in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat. And if you would like to check out another tour before you're finished here, then stay tuned for this one where we look inside the homes of another A-list actor, Brad Pitt. I'll see you all next time. Bye. Brad Pitt has owned multiple luxury homes over the years, but his home base has always been his Los Angeles compound. He purchased the Craftsman style home off of Elvira actress Cassandra Peterson in 1994 for $1.7 million. The property, dubbed Briarcliff Manor, has also been said to be haunted. Over the years, Brad has added onto the historic estate, purchasing surrounding properties and creating his own private compound. The entire area is now said to span over 80,000 square feet. Brad Pitt is an A-list actor and film producer who's received a number of accolades and awards over his Hollywood career. He starred in a ton of movies, but his first leading roles in big budget productions came with A River Runs Through It, Legends of the Fall, and Interview with the Vampire. As a public figure, Brad has been dubbed one of the most powerful and influential individuals in the American entertainment industry. And at the time of this recording, he's amassed an estimated net worth of $300 million. While Brad has owned stunning homes from Los Angeles to across the pond in France, he's stayed put at his main home since the early 90s, just expanded it. Hey guys, it's Kara, back with another exclusive house tour here in Famous Entertainment. And in this one, we're seeing where Brad Pitt calls home. Don't forget to like, subscribe, Subscribe and hit me up on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. Let's begin with Brad's focal property, or what I would call his dream home, his compound in LA. His estate is located in Los Feliz, which is a trendy neighborhood that attracts both established types and creative up-and-comers. It's a hillside enclave that borders the massive Griffith Park, close to both the famed Griffith Observatory and the Greek Theater. Over the decades, Brad has created a private paradise for himself and his family by buying up surrounding properties to his original one and expanding it immensely. He bought the first home back in 1994, hot off his new success, which was only just beginning, for a modest $1.7 million off of Elvira star Cassandra Peterson, which is actually a pretty interesting story in itself, and I was able to read that in Elvira's autobiography. The home, dubbed Briarcliff Manor, is a historic craftsman style estate and is no doubt beautiful. Miss Peterson details that she had lived in the manor for some time and was coming to love it not planning on moving out anytime soon either, as she was expecting and pregnant with her daughter. Brad first appeared in Miss Peterson's life while auditioning for a role in the Elvira Mistress of the Dark movie, though she recalled him being far too attractive for the part. She then got a random call from him about her home in the Hollywood Hills, after he got her number from Nicolas Cage. While Cassandra didn't want to sell her property anymore, Brad was persistent and ended up convincing her to sell to him. Miss Peterson, funnily enough, moved onto the same block and right next door to Brad some years later. While Peterson details a few spooky situations at the home she sold to Pitt in the book, she's not sure whether the haunted happenings continued after she moved out, but more on that in just a moment. Either way, it's clear that Brad was the right man to purchase the home, and Miss Peterson thinks that too. Briarcliff Manor was built back in 1910 for an oil baron, so it's quite vintage. The main house boasts over 5,300 square feet of space, with six beds and seven bathrooms. Since Brad snagged this house, he spent the following two decades collecting neighboring properties to add to the compound. Not to mention, he's done a lot of work to the main house to make it more family friendly too. I mean, he does have six kids, so I think that was kind of necessary. 
Adding on more properties also gave Brad more privacy and space for the kids to play. His compounds currently consist of five attached properties and four of the buildings have been completely remodeled since he bought the place. In total, the spread now covers 80,000 square feet of space. Some of the smaller houses around the main house include a home that was rebuilt over a decade after purchase, a house for the nanny, a building that's used as a huge kids area, a vacant land with a discreet two bedroom cottage and more. Brad's vision was to create a free flowing compound that suited the original craftsman homes in the area, dating back to 1915. It's a dream home made for both work and play, considering his main house also doubles as a space for his Plan B production company, located on the upper level. In the late 90s, a few years after his initial purchase, Brad went on to buy house number two, a smaller one for 300 180K located at the rear of the land. This structure spans almost 2,500 square feet. He then added on another house, costing 475K, which spanned just over 1,600 square feet. Later on, when Brad and Angelina Jolie were still together, another addition was made in 2008 for $1.28 million, even though it was a humble 1,500 square foot abode. The following year, the former couple spent $1.1 million on a huge barn like structure, which now reportedly has a secret cave and its own bar. This made it possible to make one building a huge playroom for the kids, also doubling as a living quarters and den for the grown-ups. The completely secluded compound has a bunch of exciting stuff outside too. There are three swimming pools and plenty of terraces and patios to soak up the sun. Further amenities include a tennis court and a large skate park that goes around a portion of the property. Since Brad's divorce, he's added even more fun stuff for the kids. Aerial shots reveal water slides, swings, pool toys, a treehouse, and even a bouncy castle. It seems like the family compound is more like an amusement park these days. Back in 2013, Brad told Esquire that it can get noisy at home, but he loved it, admitting, I always thought that if I wanted to do a family, I wanted to do it big. I wanted there to be chaos in the house. There's a constant chatter in our house, whether it's giggling or screaming or crying or banging. I love it. I love it. I love it. I hate it when they're gone. While the Fight Club star is almost always private about his home life and his house, he somewhat recently gave fans a glimpse inside his huge garden at the property in a video posted to graduates from Missouri State University. Brad was a student there before leaving to pursue his career as an actor and wanted to make sure students leaving during these uncertain times felt inspired. In the footage, he said, Hi everyone, Brad here from quarantine with a shout out to the graduating class of Missouri State University. It must be very strange during these trying times, but no, we're rooting for you. Our money's on you to make this world a better place. We could see Brad outside of neatly lined hedges and greenery looking happy and relaxed. On another note, the former owner Elvira or Cassandra Peterson claimed that Briarcliff Manor may actually be haunted. We don't know if Brad has had any incidents in his decades living here. While Cassandra did, there were some spooky happenings. She reveals, I have a chapter in my book about this house I lived in called Briarcliff Manor. My ex-husband and I moved in and weird stuff started happening. She continued, I mean, first thing I was unpacking boxes in the second floor and I told the movers not to to take anything to the third floor because I didn't know what we were going to do with that room. So I'm unpacking boxes and I hear these footsteps across the ceiling. I look up and I could actually see vibrations as this person walked across the room. I go running up the stairs and say, hey, I told you guys not to and I'm stopped in my tracks. I see there's nobody up there. There was nowhere to hide up there. It was just one big empty room. As time went on, more and more things kept happening. This included seeing ghosts two times very, very clearly. I was talking to the damn things like they were real people and then they just kind of vanished before my eyes. Things went on and on there. I got to the point where I said, I got to get out of here. I can't deal with this anymore. We got a Native American shaman to come in and save the house and clear it. While his compound haunted or not is more than enough for Brad, he also reportedly owns a contemporary retreat in the Hollywood Hills. The star has expressed a passion for architecture and he had a hand in designing this custom home. Brad worked with Graft, a trio of young architects, on the dramatic yet tranquil house, built much in the style of Californian desert modernism. The aim, according to the Graft team, was to create a clean, well-functioning and flexible space, also with a harmonious atmosphere. They used mica stone for all the walls 
walls, floors, and ceilings because it brightens things up and for contrast, it was mixed with pine floors. The zen-like home boasts hidden shelves and nooks built into many of the walls, the intention of keeping each room free of clutter and minimalistic. Impressive wood beams and skylights line the ceiling along the bathroom over the enclosed glass shower. Brad's house in the Hollywood Hills might look more like a bachelor pad than a home for his big family, but his solo sanctuary is one that shouldn't be overlooked. All right, so now we've checked out a couple of Brad Pitt's properties, especially his main compound in Los Feliz, which he started building with Barcliffe Manor. What did you guys think? I wish we could see more of his main homes interiors, that's for sure. But based on what we know about the original home, it's certainly impressive. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, follow me on Instagram to chat, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.